Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today, I'm gonna to show you some things that might make you think twice about downloading any TensorFlow or Stable Diffusion model you find on the internet that seems cool, that someone said you should use in uh, your web GUI or you know, on your machine. Especially um, completely packaged uh, Stable Diffusion installers, which we'll get to later. So what this is, um, this is the result of a annual competition for ML security called Machine Learning Security Evasion Competition. And uh, the person whose work we're showcasing here today actually got second in one of these competitions. And uh, they impressively ended up with uh, a full um, RCE exploit. So what that means is um, RCE stands for Remote Code Execution. So this was a TensorFlow model they put together, which is a common Python library and platform used for building um, AI models. And they found a clever way to use um, a module or a, a, a common approach for stringing um, modules together um, called layers in a TensorFlow model to uh, inject a um, exploit or you know, this RCE and eventually end up with um, the ability to remotely um, execute code on a target box, which again is uh, what RCE stands for, remote code execution. Um, and in this case, this means that uh, they can remotely access the machine whenever they want. So yeah, the basis of this um, are layers. Layers are kind of the fundamental building blocks of TensorFlow models. Um, some of these layers are predefined and are effectively libraries. So you can pretty easily check if they've been uh, tampered with. But uh, if you want to do anything interesting uh, and string these together in creative ways, you inherently end up using Lambda layers, which are arbitrary code that, um, for reasons I, am, I need to look into further, uh, deserialize um, less consistently, which means when you basically uncompress them, uh, it's harder to tell exactly what they do and exactly what they have access to, which is interesting. So um, that's the focus of this researcher. He said, yeah, I'm going to see if you can take Lambda layers and put funny things in them and then have them do evil things. And um, yeah, it's interesting because um, even in the documentation for TensorFlow, uh, they kind of say like, yeah, these are sort of dangerous. So don't just be lazy and use these to save time and just think that security is an afterthought. Um, and at a high level, it's important to know that uh, machine learning models are not just um, like baked data sets that can't necessarily do anything on their own. Um, even TensorFlow themselves say uh, in their security section of the project that models should be treated as programs. And from a security standpoint, you should not run untrusted models um, on a machine you care about. So, um, and that's here, this is, there's a lot going on here, but they also say that, you know, if you're not sure of something, you should run it in a sandbox, which is, in certain cases of VM and in certain cases is just a specific environment to run where you can tell a program what it can and can't touch. Uh, and we'll get to that a little later. So yeah, so they focused on Keras layers. We're not going to get too far into that uh, in this video. And by all means, this is a, this is a high level understanding and description of how these Keras layers work. So look in the description if you want a great video explaining Keras layers. So the steps for this um, are loading the model. So they pretty clearly here say models in TensorFlow and Keras can be exported so that they can be shared with other people. So this is serializing. Um, and importantly, they say that's all it takes for a malicious model that the exploit person um, intends to load. This is a very common way of loading models and why it's only dangerous when accepting untrusted models. You can find the usage on GitHub um, lots of places. So lots of people do this out of convenience. It's very common. Uh, now getting the RCE, um, serializing is another important step here. They show that, um, this is where they're adding their malicious layer to the model itself and then compressing it into, uh, this effectively a checkpoint file. So think of this as similar to if you've downloaded stable diffusion before. If you get a specific checkpoint, uh, like a pre-trained model, uh, this is, think of this as the same kind of file. Uh, and then they say here, the most important part is the Lambda layer. The layer uh, is just there for show, uh, but in a real scenario, uh, it would be pretty easy to make this look like any other existing layer 
uh, and make it really hard to understand where the layers interact with each other. Now, um, the demo they have is showing a reverse shell. So basically showing, um, loading the model, running a model, having it behave exactly as you'd think. I think this is like a basic classification demo. Uh, and then they show uh, the hacker's machine and on the target machine. And by the end of this, um, the hacker or the you know the person doing malicious things gets access um, remotely to the machine that they ran their exploit on. So here they're showing, here's the exploit. Um, they export it. And here, now they're listening for what the exploit's going to call out to when it uh, executes. So the code has to execute on the host machine for that to work. This is now running the TensorFlow model uh, in the upper portion. And you can see that once it's run and everything goes through, uh, you have this connection received, which shows that, uh, yeah, they ran this machine learning model, knew were none the wiser, and now the person who wrote this exploit can do whatever they want on that machine. So pretty simple demo, but um, the steps to get here are obviously pretty complex. And uh, yeah, so basically they're showing, you know, look, it all works as it should. Uh, we were still able to apply an exploit. And um, after this runs, it can actually remove any remnants of this as well. So thinking that your antivirus or that um, even unpickling tools would catch this, um, they wouldn't. And uh, yeah, so think carefully about what you download. Uh, if you can't audit your own code, just wait a little and make sure that at least someone else other than you gets pwned. Uh, I'm not going to directly link to the GitHub where this stuff is, but if you'd like to read this for educational purposes, YouTube, um, check that out. Uh, and I definitely don't condone doing this, but it's something that's important to not be ignorant about or just like willingly unaware of. Uh, yeah, and then this is where they mention uh, their submission here. They actually improved this a bit um, and showed how you could even e more easily inject this with uh, even if you pixel for pixel wanted to make sure that everything was working properly. Uh, so yeah, I think I thought this was a cool find. Um, it hasn't been surfaced many other places. I might look at other work that's kind of come out of uh, MLSEC, but um, for now, I definitely recommend l watching uh, this Black Hat talk and uh, keeping an eye on the submissions for DEF CON this year because they're going to be sick. So, um, going into what you really shouldn't do, uh, definitely sus uh, are these installers so that you can skip all the steps of having to install anything. Uh, they're also usually paid. So this one's only $6, but, and I guess it looks like it's not too sus because usually the, the engineers doing this are lazy or just don't care about what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, this would be an example of something that is sus. So saying, yeah, you just do it all once. It just works. You can generate images whenever you want. Um, this is an example of something that could also be a bad idea to download. Um, stuff for Windows, I think generally will have more exploits in it because more people who probably don't know what they're doing will use Windows. Um, using Linux is difficult and maybe not the easiest, but uh, yeah, I think that's... you in certain cases would have less likely being screwed over if you use Linux. Um, another curious thing you could do if you're a bit more on the advanced side. Um, so Cubes OS is an OS that's meant for hypersecurity focused people. It's an OS that has every program pretty much packaged in its own VM. And recently with the advent of a lot of remote ML training, uh, they've actually developed a version of a VM that you can pass an NVIDIA GPU into. And quite frankly, like most of the stuff I do locally um, is all done in Docker because I don't have to men mess. I, like local configs are really delicate and I like using Docker because I don't really have to worry about screwing up one minor version or, a, or one dependency for another tool I use and then have it break everything else that I use. So... Definitely remember uh, or, you know, advise looking into that if that's um, something that you think would make your workflows a bit easier. So, yeah, example of why um, 
you should think you know, carefully about what you download in terms of these models. Let me know if you know anyone who's kind of had this bite them. Um, you know, read GitHub comments for sure, uh, and don't get pwned. But um, yeah, thanks everyone. As always, I hope you learned something and stay tuned for more AI content. And if you're still here, um, please subscribe and thumbs up our videos. Um, that helps us a lot and it helps us understand what you like and what you'd like to see more of.